Hi everyone, welcome to the Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. The project I'm currently working on uses this really cool feature, something called the Dispatch Group. Dispatch Groups are really good for grouping network calls together, ensuring that processing only occurs when everything's complete, and you can use this for a whole range of really good synchronous operations to make sure that your pages load at once, processing only occurs when other things have happened, and it's a really nice elegant technique for orchestrating network calls and making sure everything works the way you expect. Come on in and let's explore this abstraction called the Dispatch Group together. Okay, there's really two ways we can use Dispatch Group. One, we can be notified and the other is wait. Let's take a look at notified first. So here we've got an application where we only want to enable the login button down here if all the data and all of our network calls complete, only then do we want to enable the login button. So this is something I've seen used on projects before. Where there's a whole bunch of network calls that need to be made. And only then do we want to enable something to happen, in this case, login. So what that looks like here from a code point of view is I'm just in a view controller. And here's where we can use this thing called the dispatch group. Dispatch group, you can almost think of a stack. We're going to have a pairing of enter and leave commands. And every time we enter the stack, we want to make sure we leave. That's how we know that we've completed our process. So the way it works is you create one of these groups. And before you're going to do a network call, you go group.enter. That means I'm about to enter the dispatch group and I'm expecting something to happen. Now, the only way that you can leave that dispatch group or trigger it is by calling a corresponding leave. So that's why when you see dispatch groups, you'll often see these enter leave uh, calls paired. You have one for each operation that you want to complete. In this case, we're going to call fetch profile. So we're going to call enter. And once we've asynchronously come back and gotten our profile data, we're going to call leave, which means we're done. Then we can do the same thing for another call to fetch entitlement. Same thing for another one call of fetch preference. And by having these enter leaves execute, we will not actually do the thing we want to do, which in this case, enable the login button until all of these are complete. So what will happen when we run this code is enter is going to be called three times in a row. We're going to enter, enter, enter. And then asynchronously behind the scenes, we're going to leave, we're going to leave. And on that third leave, that's when we finish the dispatch group. That's when we've completed all of our asynchronous operations. And then and only then, Will this notify be called? And we can go ahead and do our processing, processing in here. In this case, execute the login button. Let me show you what it looks like in code. Okay, so here we have a project where we've got a nib file and we're gonna make various network calls to fill these out before we enable that login button. So the top, I've just got some structs which represent uh, the data for the profile, the entitlement and the preference. And then here you can just see we've got our labels hooked up along with that login button. And then down here in the bottom, this is where we're actually going to do our network calls. So we're actually fetching a profile from a fake network call that I made. Actually, it's not fake, it's a real network call. It's just a fake endpoint. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna fetch profiles. We're gonna fetch entitlements. We're gonna parse the JSON. We're gonna get these things back. And then when we do the calls up here, we'll take the data we'll set the data that we want to the label, and that's basically how it works. Now, if you were given this task and you were basically told, only enable this login button once all three of these have executed as a group, how would you do it? I mean, there's a couple of ways you could solve this problem. One, you could create some Booleans and track when each one of these things completes. Two, you could try to chain them together with a series of callbacks. So we could call fetch profile first, embed fetch entitlement inside and fetch preference inside that kind of a calling chain. But the problem with that is you never know which one of these is gonna complete first. Uh, it's a real challenge sometime. And that's where this thing called the dispatch group comes in. Let's take a look and see how it works. First thing we do is we come up here and we create our dispatch group. This is our coordinator. This is the thing that's going to keep track of who's ready and who's not in terms of these network calls. Then to use it is very, very simple. Whenever you want to add something to the group, you call enter. So in this case, to fetch our profile, we're basically saying, I'm going to enter the group. I'm going to fetch the profile. And only when 
our profile is finished and we've gotten it, are we going to signify that we've left or we can leave and that task is done. Likewise, we can do that with entitlement. This is another network call. We can add to our dispatch group, make sure this enters the flow and it will only complete when its leave is called. And then the same thing down here for this preference, we can fetch preference, enter leave. And now to be notified when all of these things have occurred, we're going to come in here and we can go group dot notify queue, putting ourselves back on the main thread so we can safely update our UI. And this is what will happen when all of these occur. Now, just to show you how the processing works, I'm going to come in here and let's just add some print statements. Let's go print every time we do an enter. Let's just do an enter there, enter there, enter there. And whenever we do a leave, let's just also print out when we're leaving. So we're going to leave here. We're going to leave here and we're going to leave here. And then here's where we'll be notified. Okay. Now let's run this now and just see what this series of print event print series works and also watch the for the enabling of this login button. So I'm just going to fire up the simulator. It should be coming over here. Let's fire you up there and hit go. And voila. One, two, three, login enable. So it happened very quick, but these did all load at the same time. They did come in and only when they all came in and they were all activated did login actually happen. I'm just going to reset this. We'll run it again. Okay, it happens very quick now because uh, the back end is refreshed and it's sending these things out very quickly. But that's how we can basically chain these things together and enable that button all at once. And if we look at the output, the thing I just want to show you here is I'm just going to go clear this. Let's just run this again. I'm going to hit reset. Watch what happens when I hit go. First, we enter, enter, enter. So that's us entering each one of these network calls. But remember, we're all queuing them up at the same time. And then one at a time when they complete, we go leave, leave, leave. And it's only when that last one is left do we actually call the notify and do our work down here. So that in a nutshell is how dispatch group notifies work. Super cool, great way for coordinating the loading of events on pages and making sure things happen at once. Next, I want to show you another slight tweak we can put on this, something called wait. Okay, wait is very similar to notify, but in this case, instead of us being notified when something has happened, here we're going to do some processing and we're going to wait and we're going to sit there and synchronously wait and block until a series of events actually occurs. So here's an example of where I saw this used in a real project. This is a banking app and here when someone hits the send button, they're going to send some money or do a transfer. However, we don't actually want to do the transfer until we actually check for duplicates. So when they hit send, we don't want to send, we want to do some duplicate checking first. We can use dispatch group for that. Here we create our dispatch group. We enter it just like we did before. And then here we can do some network calls to go ahead and check for duplicates. And here is our leave. So this is very similar to notify. We're using the exact same paired mechanics of enter and leave here to set up our network call and ensure that all this processing happens. What's different is down here, we're going to call something called group.wait. So when they hit send to send the money, before we go ahead and send the money, we're going to sit here and wait. Now, it's important to understand that this is actually a synchronous waiting block. In other words, when we get down here to our breakpoint, if we set a breakpoint here, this is actually going to sit and block us on the main UI thread, which is why it's very important that we put this on a global background queue so we're not blocking the main UI thread. And we'll sit there. And then once leave is called, in other words, our dispatch group has finished, then wait will wake up, then we can go ahead and do our processing. And in this case, we just put ourselves back on the main UI thread and we can go ahead and in this case, show a alert, basically showing whether or not we can actually send the money or whether or not they've made a duplicate payment. Let's take a look and see how this looks in code. 
Okay, so here we've got our weight example. Here I've just got a simple timer, which I'm gonna to use to increment the time on the page because I wanna show you what a blocking weight call looks like. And here we've just got code, basically this is an action hooked up to our send button. And all we wanna do here is when we click send, we wanna do some processing to check for a duplicate but only after that's done do we then want to go ahead and potentially send the request, send the money. So let's just see how that works. So mechanically, it's just like we saw before. Here we're gonna set up a group. Once someone hits the send button, we're gonna go and enter our dispatch group. We're gonna go ahead and do some processing and we'll only get out of our group when leave is called. So here again is that enter leave pairing. Now here's what's different. Here's where we have our self group wait. So this is where we're gonna wait, and this will only be notified when this completes. And then once it completes, we can take the output of our processing, which is, do we have a duplicate payment? And we can show an alert saying, yes, you have a duplicate payment, or no, you do not. So let's run this and just see what it looks like. So in here, I can go ahead and we can see my counter is running, so that's good. This is in real time, I'm not blocking the main UI thread. If I hit send, I've got a two second delay going on in here just to wait and simulate a long network call. Here's something that comes back and it says, hey, uh, a duplicate payment was detected. Great, okay, that's good. Let's come down here and here's where I'm actually popping up the alert to show it. And here's my call, which has a three second delay. Let's return, uh, instead of saying it does have a duplicate, let's just change this to false. So here I'm just I'm kind of just faking out the result here. I'm just calling some URL, which has a three second delay and then passing back my state here. Now I'm gonna go send. And here we should see that after three seconds, the notification happens and hey, this time the money was sent, so it's okay. So this is a really elegant way of setting up or enabling users to go ahead and use your UI to do things but not actually go through with the processing until you've done some processing of your own and ensure that it's okay to continue. That's the beauty of this dispatch group wait. Really elegant thing to do. Now the one gotcha, or the thing I've got to warn you about, is just you gotta be careful on how you use this wait. You always wanna make sure you're not doing it on the main UI thread. For example, look and watch what happens when we run the app now and I don't put it on a global background uh, queue. So when I go ahead and hit send now, you can see our, our counter is incrementing here. We are indeed counting up. But watch what happens when I hit send. The counter stops. We're blocking now. And that's the thing you gotta be careful with this. When you call self.groupWait, that is a synchronous waiting call. So we've basically frozen our UI. It's gonna sit there forever because there's no way out of it. And that's just something you've gotta be careful of uh, when you're using this. So before you do your wait, always put yourself on a background queue, go ahead and then call wait. And that way you won't be blocking the main, U, the main UI thread. When you do go ahead and call, it's gonna come back, you're not gonna be blocking, and then you can go ahead and do your processing. That's the only gotcha and thing you gotta be careful uh, about when using this wait. Okay, so there you have it folks, another arrow in your toolkit that you can use to group network calls together and do some really elegant processing in your apps. I know that the new hot thing now is async wait in iOS 15, but if you're not on iOS 15 and you're like me and you're doing a real world project, we can't always take advantage of these latest and greatest things yet. So this is where I found Dispatch Group, a really effective tool, something really worth knowing. And now that you've seen how it works, if you ever need to group network calls together, or wait for some processing to occur before something else happens, you can try reaching for this and just create your own demo, play with it and see how you like it. I've seen it used really effectively in projects and it can really simplify your uh, asynchronous process. Okay, I hope that was useful. Thank you so much for coming. Have a great weekend, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.